Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In previous installment we discussed different ways of configuring one particular type of head preamplifiers to be used with direct output of your tape deck. I'm not trying to limit it to any particular topology or configuration because there are so many different possible options and different ways you can follow on this particular road. Somebody will like balanced topology like I have here. Other people will claim that single-ended topology offers the simplicity and clarity and whatnot, and therefore should be considered. I'm absolutely for this type of argument and discussion. And the proof, of course, is in the sound. Something that is very hard to do over the internet. So basically, every designer should be free to follow his inclinations and his choices and the proof will be in the final listening which will be done in more producing environment hopefully in front of some very high-end system that would allow you to hear different aspects of the sound and make your determinations as far as which is the better topology And today we're going to concentrate on actually using that particular type of circuitry, the special head preamp for the tape reproduction. How you connect it to your system and how do you use it. There are some minor, I, I don't want to call them major aspects to this particular side, but there are still things you should consider. And here again, we have two representative samples of similar topology, but done in different ways. One with simple toggle switches and front panel controls, and the other one with the front panel selector and basically very very short signal pass configuration inside just as we discussed last time but first let's take a look briefly at the subject of connection we are not going to spend too much time on this subject but some di brief discussion would be advisable. Let's take a look at the back panel of this particular preamplifiers, where you see the magnitude of connectors, multitude, I should say, of connectors. You see the normal XLR connectors here, and then you have the RCA's connections, which allow you to do single-ended connection and let me jump the gun a little bit here by saying that in many cases, including this particular configuration, when connecting to the phono or to tape head, RCA inputs might hold some advantage. It, I know it sounds strange coming from me, but that's okay, because I've been a very long time proponent of balanced topology except when it comes to connecting either phono cartridge or tape head because those two transducers represent very different case now there is another item you notice when you look at this arrangement and it is two strange looking connectors they definitely not the xlr connectors but they are what i would call the traditional ampex style connectors and these connectors are not very hard to obtain you can buy them on dg key for example 
and they will allow you to connect the MPEX machine without modifying or butchering its signal cables. So they will just plug in directly. As you can see here, those special connectors are pretty much wired in parallel with the standard connectors already in the unit. So it is just a matter of properly connecting the wires. The rest pretty much is simple. And to, to make a long story short, now we're going to proceed with the installation of this particular head preamp into this rack, which consists of MPEX 445 mechanism and some auxiliary shelves. Nothing fancy about it. If you look at the signal cables coming out of the tape drive, we'll see the now familiar MPEX style connectors. But since the back of this particular preamp doesn't have that style, I just made the adapters that allow me to connect the MPEX cable to the XLR connectors. And I can simply plug them in directly. And this way the connection is made. Now, in order to properly play this system, you have to set up several different parameters. Number one, you have to select the speed. And in this case, we're going to be playing the 7.5 inch per second tape. Therefore, the speed must be set to low. You also select the real sizes on the MPEX. In this case, we select the small size. Second step, or the third step, as it may be, is selecting the proper tape head. There are two positions to this switch, and the in position corresponds to two tracks, and the out position corresponds to four tracks. Since this particular tape is a four-track tape, that's what we're going to be using. And the last element is the EQ switch position on the preamp. And in this case, it is 7.5 inch position. And so at this point, it is all ready to be played.
and now let's try and play 15 inch per second two track recording and for this we have to make some changes this machine is not the easiest setup to operate for such changes but still if you are careful enough hopefully you can avoid the mistakes of course the first thing you do you switch your head into the two track configuration the second item is your speed selection you go to high speed now for the reel sizes you go high with large reels and the last change is your EQ selection which is now going to be 15 inch per second IEC position now with this many steps it's easy to make mistake unfortunately so you can start listening to your 15 inch tape while still sitting in the 7.5 ips configuration for equalization it can happen I'm sure it happened to some of us. How to avoid all this? It's not very easy. But this particular machine, Ampex 440, 445, had an option of the server capstan drive. And that capstan drive would allow you to electronically switch the speeds. Yes, it still gives you only choice of two speeds, but I think there is a trick that allows you to basically slave it to this, to this switch. So the three speed selection would be happening automatically as you select selected the IQ or EQ selection on your preamplifier. That would be a very, very welcome change and I'm actively looking for this option. It, is, it doesn't seem to be a very easy option to find, so, so far I've been drawing blank. But who knows, maybe in some not so distant future I will be able to find this option, in which case the number of manipulations will be reduced to the minimum. I will still have to switch the format for the tape heads and the reel sizes but the rest will be done more or less in unison EQ and the speed and hopefully I can get this machine running at three speeds normally like I said this particular tape drive only is capable of two speeds even with the servo drive with the servo drive you can select any two speeds out of four possibilities but it's still going to remain only two possible choices so the question is is what i have there in this particular bunch of hardware all bolted together is it an ideal system and of course you know the answer it is not an ideal system it is something that has a lot of manual control to it and it allows you choice of formats, speeds and EQ types, which is nice. It is not the most user-friendly machine by any stretch of imagination, but it gets the job done. So if that's your goal in life, to have a machine with this type of capability, you can certainly take this particular approach. The MPX tape drives are not very expensive. You can very easily buy them. They, they are essentially all over the place in various conditions. The one we have here is in cleaner than most conditions and it has a fairly rare configuration of switchable tape heads. That, that was definitely not the most common configuration, but it seems to be generally available in the marketplace, if you look hard enough.
The rest of this setup is pretty much up to you. As I discussed before, as I mentioned before, there are many, many different vehicles you can use to build your tape preamp. Starting with some very simple and inexpensive phono stages, modifying them to your delight and getting actually very, very good sound out of them. And you can go all the way to multi-thousand dollar preamps. Is it necessary? No, I don't think so. If you know what you're doing, you can get your job done with much, much more reasonable expense. And now let's enjoy a bit more beautiful music. This will be reproduction playing the, another IPI, very, very high quality tape, direct copy of the master tape. It's pretty much as good as it gets. So enjoy it. And I hope to see you next time. Until that, please stay well. Bye-bye.